Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth day of the Python 30 course. In today's video, we are going to learn about dealing with time zones and converting date time objects to Unix timestamp and vice versa. Now, before we start, a small request for you. If you feel you are benefiting from these videos, make sure to tweet your daily progress with hashtag Python 30. That way, more people can learn about this course and benefit from it. Now you know the drill. Once you finish this tutorial, you have to go ahead to my GitHub repository and try to solve the questions provided for this topic. Don't check the solutions file first. Try to solve the question yourself. Also remember one thing. If you solve the question and you have a better solution than the solution proposed in my, in my repository, then make sure to send a pull request to the GitHub account. That way, I can include your solution in my repository and can also mention your name and other details. That is a great way to be recognized within the Python community. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. First, let's discuss dealing with time zones. So far, we have been dealing with naive datetime objects. What are naive datetime objects? Well, it does not have any information about the time zone. Let's see how we can check if a date time object has information about the time zone or not. It is by using the time zone info. So here you can see I have a date object specifying 15th of June 2019. And now if I print dt object dot tz info, let's see what the result is. And the result is none. And therefore this means that this date object is a naive object. Now the code below now, this is one of the drawbacks of the Python datetime module. There is no way to make the datetime object aware of time zones using any class or method from the datetime module. That doesn't mean that you cannot achieve it, yeah? You can use the PyTZ library to add time zone information to your application. So how to uh, use the PyTZ library? How to know which time zone, time zone should you take into account? So here, what I can do is, first, let's import PyTZ and let's remove this part. We don't need it. And then I can say print PyTZ dot all time zones. When you run the script, you will see that you get a list of all the possible time zones that you can use in your code and basically refer to that time zone. Or what you can do is you can refer to this Wikipedia page which has all the information about the time zone database name. So basically pick whatever you want. For example, if I want to pick India, I have something called as Asia Calcutta here. So basically this is the time zone that I would be referring to uh, for choosing a date time object, which is in the Indian time zone. All right. So now let's go ahead and see how PyTZ works. So here, let's remove this first. And then here I can say time zone India equal to PyTZ dot time zone. And then we have to mention the zone name. So what I'll do is I'll go here. I'll copy paste this. And then so here we have our Indian time zone. And then I can say date India equal to date time dot now. And then within the now method, I'm going to pass in the time zone information. So basically, I'm trying to find the current time in India. And for that, I'm first choosing the time zone India. And then I'm passing it inside my now method. So now when I print date time India. And here you can see the current date time in India is 2019-06-16. And the time is 12.40. So basically 12.40 a.m. So it's already night there, you know. So now I can easily work with this date time object and do whatever I want in my own time zone. So this is the advantage of using PyTZ. Let's quickly talk about Unix timestamp. The Unix timestamp is the number of seconds since the epoch until any date and time. What is epoch? Epoch is the generic term used for January 1, 1970. We can use the Python datetime module to convert any datetime object to its unique timestamp counterpart. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I can say timestamp equal to datetime dot 
now let's convert the current date time to timestamp and then i can use the timestamp method here so now if i print timestamp print stamp you see this is the this is basically that uh, the number of seconds since january 1 1970 until now so this is basically the unix timestamp now i can also go ahead and convert this timestamp back to its date time object component how to do that so here i can say dt object equal to date time dot from timestamp we have to use the from timestamp method here and then pass in the timestamp as an argument now if i print dt object let's go ahead and do that so here you see so now first we uh, converted the current date time to its timestamp and then we converted the timestamp back to its date time object so the date is 2019 june 15th and the current time here is 9 18 pm so this is basically how you easily deal with unix timestamp how you can convert it to a date time object and how you can convert a date time object back to a unix timestamp so i hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on unix timestamp and time zones Make sure to check out the GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description section below and go ahead and solve the problems for day four of the Python 30 course because the more you solve, the better you will become at it. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends. I will see you in the next tutorial.